Hello guys, this is Cardmates and we present our new video. What an excellent poker term, all in. When pronouncing it, we can worry, feel the excitement and be afraid of losing all our chips and ending the game. All in is the most powerful action in Texas No Limit Hold'em. In some cases, the burst adrenaline exceeds the level that appears when engaging in some extreme sports. No more strategy development, no more stressful decisions, no more guessing what the other players have. Just sitting back in your chair, relax and watch what the other players will decide to do. You either lose your stack or another player, maybe players, will significantly increase your stack. The most critical question is when you should go all in and when you shouldn't. Most players use their intuition. In this video, we'll use logic, common sense and math along with your intuition to make better decisions when you risk your tournament's life. What are the best situations to shove? This is not an easy question. This is a personal decision based on what type of player you are, your hand, your stack size, your situation, your position, blinds level, your knowledge, about all the players, how you are feeling this day, and more and more. There is a popular rule in the poker community that a player should think about shoving when he has 20 blinds or less. Some lose aggressive players hate to play with a short stack and they go all in even with 25 blinds. The others start to shove with 12 to 15 blinds. Some players play until one or two blinds left and then they go all in with their remaining stack. It is essential to understand when your stack is extremely small. If you realize it, you will have a strategy concerning the necessary spot for shoving. Here are a couple of ideas for you. If you are waiting for two good cards and the right situation, it may take you a few orbits to get the necessary hand. While you wait for this, your stack will decrease along with your fold equity, especially if the blinds increase quickly. For example, if it's comfortable for you to go all in with 8 blinds, then you should start thinking about shoving already with 14 to 18 blinds. Even if it takes you a few orbits to wait for the necessary hand and the right spot, you will have a good fold equity. Many players don't think about it. Instead, they wait for the premium hands and as a result, they lose their blinds. There are also the restless, lose aggressive players who open raise and go all in with very marginal hands. Some players feel comfortable even with 3 to 5 blinds, but they lose fold equity, and their shove, even with a good hand, is simply called in accordance with their pot odds. Shoving with any two cards because of a lack of game plan made in advance is the road to tournament suicide. It may sometimes happen that your cards will be completely dead and you will remain without stack at all. In this case, you should only rely on the fact that you will be dealt good cards on the board. But that's okay, this is poker. Short stack problems. When you have about 10 to 14 big blinds, think about expanding your open shove range. You can shove about 14.9% of your hands. Your fold equity is big, and many players will fold a large number of hands to your all-in. Otherwise, your fold equity will be melt away like there. For example, you are on CO, cut off. At the 9 max table, you have King Jack of Sweet and a stack of 16,000 ships. The blinds are 1,000 to 2,000. You have 8 blinds in your stack. In a few minutes, the blinds will increase to 1,500 to 3,000 chips. In this case, you will have 5 big blinds left. All of the players folded, you have a good situation with a very good hand. If you shove, you have good fold equity. You are likely to get the blinds without a fight, and if you get called, you have enough out. It's worth putting a note here. A short stack with 5 blinds or less has little to no fold equity. The player's pot odds at the table are such that you can be called with almost any two cards. They also have a bonus, another player will be knocked out of the tournament. However, it's worth saying that sometimes you'll be card dead. 
and you will be forced to become the player with a very short stack. The best thing to do here is to consider your options and to choose the best one. When you have a significantly short stack, your options for action diminish. Calling a bet is very expensive for you, unless you are on the small blind and you can call the blind at half price. It would be optimal to fold or to go all in in such a situation. When deciding to shove, consider some equity factors. This will give you the best chance to stay afloat and reach the next orbit or double up. Think about your fold equity, your hand equity, your position equity, your situation equity. If you are in the big blind and one player bets from CO, cut off, or bottom after everyone folds, decide whether you should go all in or fold. If he tries to steal the blinds, he will probably open with a wide range. Analyze if you have enough equity to go all in. It's interesting that many players go all in with any two cards when they feel they have a short stack. A significant percentage of these players don't even consider which player they play against and in what situation they are. When a player has 6 to 12 blinds left and he shops with 6 and 2 of suite because he has a short stack and he's afraid of being bitten by the blinds, it usually doesn't make sense in most cases. For example, one player made a raise and another one called. The player on the big blind went all in with 6 2 of suite. He had 6 blinds left in his stack after he posted the big blind. The equity of 6 2 of suite hand against 2 other players is very bad. Let's assume that the player with 6 2 of suite went all in against ace 10 of suite in a pair of 9s. The prognosis for this player won't be very good, his equity is very low. He could just fold his hand on big blind and then folds his hand on small blind, and he still has 5.5 blinds left. At the 9 max table, he would have 7 possible best all-in hands in that orbit. In each hand, he can analyze his hand equity, fold equity, position equity and situation equity before deciding whether to go all-in or not. Should you save your chips? In some cases, it is more profitable to save chips than to go all-in when you have a short stack. This can provide you with several options. For example, you have King-10 suited. You are on the bottom with 6 blinds at the 9 max table. UTG raises to 3 big blinds. Everyone folds. This is a very good hand and it's worth playing it with 6 blinds. Let's make a note at this point. If you go all in in this situation, the opponent will mostly likely call you and you will only have to hope for luck. Calling a raise and leaving 3 blinds in your stack has some advantages. The big and small blinds can fold to the opponent's raise. You have 32% chance of hitting at least a pair on the flop. You have 12% chance of hitting a flush draw or a flush on the flop. You are in position. If your opponent checks on the flop, you can go all in even if you missed it. There is a chance that you will take the pot in this case. If the opponent bets on the flop, you may decide to call or fold depending on your reads on the situation. If you fold, you still have 3 big blinds. If he doesn't bet in this hand and you lose, you still have a few more hands before the big blind. And the last one, if the big blind or small blind raises, you will estimate the situation once more. Then to call, as in most cases, you will be committed to the pod and you will have a very good hand. The magic of geometric progression. An amazing thing about poker is that you remain in the game as long as you have at least one chip. Let me explain it to you. The story of Jack Treetop, Sterus, he was almost 2 meters tall, in poker is legendary. He took down the Texas No Limit Hold and Main event, having just one chip left. Jack Stratus won the World Series of Poker main event in 1982. The most popular poker story is as follows. Jack Stratus shoved what he thought were all his chips and lost a big hand at the beginning of the second game day of the tournament. He thought he had been eliminated from the event. Stratus 
was about to leave the table but noticed a $500 chip under a napkin on the table. Since he didn't declare himself all in, the tournament directors allowed him to continue his participation in the tournament. And believe me or not, he won a World Series of Poker title and over half a million dollars. Jack Stratos won the main event virtually from nothing because there is such a thing as geometric progression. A geometric progression, also known as a geometric sequence, is a sequence of numbers with a constant radio, which is called the common radio, between any two consecutive terms. For example, the sequence 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 is a geometric progression with a common radio 2. Each subsequent term in this series is doubled, that is, multiplied by 2. This is doubled. The geometric progression may be either your friend or your enemy. An exciting thing about poker is that successful all-ins can significantly increase a player's short stack. For example, you shove 10 blinds and you get called by the player with a bigger stack. If you win, then your stack will boost to 20 blinds. Big Stack Illusion Many people with big stacks don't get as far as they thought it would happen, especially when choosing bad hands. It seems to be very difficult to catch up with a player who has four times more chips than you do, but it's not the case. Two successful all-ins against such a player will interchange your stacks. This is the most vivid manifestation of the geometric progression. It is imperative always to choose the right hands to play with. This is especially critical when choosing a hand to go all in. When you know the card's value and how much changes as the number of people at the table changes, you can make a better decision about when to go all in. Here's an example. The chip leader has 400,000 chips. You have a small stack of 100,000 chips you only have 25% of what the big stack has. There are four players left in the tournament. The blinds are high, but not that critical. Your stack against the chip leader's one is small, but let's look deeper into the situation and see how quickly it can change. You decided to go all in with a stand off suite, which is the perfect hand to shove for a four max table. And the big stack, 400,000 chips, calls you with king jack of suite. Please, take note of the following. Number 1. In this example, we ignore the size of the blinds to simplify the situation. Number 2. You can look at the 13 important preflop probabilities table to know your odds. Your chance of winning with ace-10 of suite against king jack of suite is approximately 60%. These are good odds, especially when going all in while fold equity is involved. As a result, he calls and you win. Your stack boosts to 200,000 chips, and your opponent has 300,000 behind. Besides, you can now choose your hands more carefully, since your stack has grown. In a few hands, you decided to go all in with a pair of eights. The same player calls you with ace 4 off suite. Your chance of winning is now 71%. You eventually win the pot and your stack is now 400,000 while your opponent has 100,000 chips behind. As you can see, just two beneficial all-ins combined with a bit of luck turned your small amount of chips into the big stack at the table. To determine the percentage of cases in which you will win, multiply these two probabilities together. 60% multiplied by 71% is equals 43%. As you can see, by moving all in in these two cases, you win both hands 43% of the time. These are good odds considering that your stack was 4 times less than your opponent's stack just a few hands ago. This is the main reason why knowing the value of hands with different numbers of people at the table is the key to decide when to go all in to win a certain amount of money. Moving on. Let's assume your opponent has 800,000 chips and you have only 100 chips left, which is 12% of your opponent's stack. To catch up with this opponent seems to be a Herculean task. And yet, let's look at the numbers to know whether it's true or not. Let's assume you go all in with the same hands as in the previous example. You first shove with a standoff suite, the big stack has 800 chips and he calls you with king jack off suite. 
As it was stated earlier, your chance of winning the hand is 60%. The winning doubles your stack, so that it now includes 200,000 chips. Your opponent now has 700,000 chips. A few hands later, you go all in with pocket eights. Your opponent calls you with ace four of suite. Your chance of winning is now approximately 71%. The victory boosts your stack to 400,000 chips and your opponent now has 500,000 chips. In a few hands, you go all in against the same opponent with ace queen of suite. Your opponent calls you with jack nine of suite. Your chance of winning is 64%. You win, and there are now 800,000 chips in your stack. Your opponent has 100,000 chips. The rolls are reversed after three all-ins. Let's multiply together the odds of winning the pot. This will give us your chances of winning all three all-ins. 60% multiplied by 71% multiplied by 64% is equal to 27%. Another side of the situation. On the other hand, if someone else has a short stack and goes all-in, you should consider your winning chances before calling his all-in. I've seen tons of players wasting that big stack with bad cards. They were making their decision based on instant, emotion, and stack size. A burning desire to knock another player out of the tournament when having negative expected value, minus EV, is often a surefire way to lose lots of chips. The ability to estimate your hand's expected value against your opponent's hand's range is perhaps the key to a profitable poker play. In other words, you should call all-in when you think you have a positive expected value, plus EV. Well, that's it guys. Thank you for watching this video. Give us a like and subscribe to our channel. You will find more educational materials about poker on our website, cardmates.net. See you guys soon.